The questions remain the same in each of these interviews. The power lies in hearing these amazing answers. My name is Tony Reese, and it is with a great privilege and honor I present to you this installment of My Life Lessons Showcasing Senior Adults. Hi there, welcome to My Life Lessons Showcasing Senior Adults, and today I have with me Mr. Paul Hetrick. Hi Paul, welcome to the project. Thank you so much, it's good to be part of it and oh, be with you. Thank you. So take a moment and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, as my wife said, we're both 82 years of age. I guess I'm the elder by three months, and so um, I have last digs, even <laughs> though I'm the older of the two. Um, we're married for 57 years. We've dated in high school. We've been together for 64 years. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to think about life without each other and relationships that have developed through our mutual relationship with each other. Uh, I grew up, uh, uh, my parents were farm family people. My dad was a uh, hired hand on my mother's father's farm and he came from a farm family as well. And uh, uh, my dad was uh, one of 12 children. Uh, two of them died in childbirth and uh, he was also lame. He was pulled between two mules. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since he was a young lad, he had been lame in one, in one leg. He married my mother at the age of 43, and my mother was 42. And um, they were together for a number of years before she developed cancer. And Dad and I took care of my mother in, in our home uh, for the years that she had cancer. Uh, there were no other choices at that time. This was in the 1940s. So we, we grew together as a family at that point under some difficult times. And through those difficult times, I think I have inherited a gift and appreciation for relationships and life that ordinarily I would not have developed except for my marriage. Mm, how wonderful. Let's go into the project. So how do you define a great life? I think a great life is to take hold of opportunities as they come. Uh, we both enjoy life, my wife and I. We were gifted with a lot of opportunities in life and sometimes we had to make opportunities out of, a lemonade out of lemons, so to speak. Uh, but that's part of the gift of life that I think, the opportunities that you are granted in life that you sometimes make the best of and sometimes learn to live with as well and overcome as well. So uh, I think life is, is just a, a wonderful gift and it's, it's given to us through relationships and the stories that we tell, the lives that we lived, the things that we shared, not only the things that maybe have been secret that have been left out, but uh, all of the gifts of life that we can articulate and those that we can't, that maybe we've forgotten a long time ago that make us who we are. How has the Highlands added to your great life? When I think of the, of the Highlands, I think of two things, and they both, uh, I think, begin with, with, with S. One is, we have been privileged to hear uh, three or four hundred new people with their stories. And it's remarkable when you move into a different community and you share, you know, not only meals, but basically all aspects of life with a new community. Uh, how much you gain from the stories that we hear at lunch and dinner and sitting in the lounge and walking with people and the uniqueness of who we are as um, part of that relationship and the stories that are unfolded. That would be, I think, one of the most important things about the Highland. The other thing is, I think, the staff who come with their own stories and their own backgrounds, but also their sensitivity to our needs in very special ways. Uh, I don't think there's anything in, in our lives path at this point, the journey that we're on, that doesn't have the attention of somebody on the staff as it is needed. Mm. And that to me, the two S's, the stories that are here and the staff that is here provide us with the essence of who we are for this part of our life's journey. 
Who are your heroes and or your role models as a child or growing up? Uh, as a child, I've had lots of them. Uh, in the Depression era, just people who were struggling and getting along and making the best of that. And then World War II came along, and I think I was filled with all kinds of heroes. Those I knew personally, those who gave their lives in World War II, uh, those who were intimate friends who were on the, on the front line, either in the Pacific Theater or in the European Theater. Plus my parents, I had a, a short relationship with my mother, and I think she was my outstanding role model as a child. I saw her in full life, and I saw her struggle through life and into death. And that has become a remarkable thing. And then my dad, uh, I was an only child because my parents were so old when they were married for the first time. Um, as a child, dad and I had to struggle together uh, to make our home, to provide our food, uh, and the freedoms that I was given along with the opportunities to work together. Uh, I had to clean the house before playing varsity football. Uh, that was because of the contract, the covenant that we made together. Uh, he was a pretty stern guy, but a good guy who provided for me. So my parents were heroes. And in my life now, my other hero is my wife. Uh, for 64 years, I've been in love with Barbara. And uh, we've had some ups and downs. We've had some issues to face through life. But uh, the joy, uh, the day-by-day -day relationship, the, the stories that we tell, being known as, as Ding Dong and Dimwit, uh, which we've now revealed to the world, is what we call each other when we're angry with each other, with each other and also when we want to share our love with each other. So. What do you think would surprise people the most about you? Learning that we're dimwit and ding dong <laughs> yeah. uh, is, is, is one thing. But, but also, um, perhaps, uh, the, the sense of, of good humor that, that we have and that we try to share with others as well. Uh, that has been, um, I think, the um, outstanding piece of joy that we, that we can share what we have with each other and uh, the openness uh, to that. I don't think we're, uh, we, we have a difficult time hiding anything from others, basically, except dimwit and ding-dong, <laughs> which is now public. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> oh. So what has your greatest life lesson been? I think basically making um, opportunities out of difficult situations. Uh, I've been blessed with a life partner uh, like Barbara and uh, with the opportunities that we've seen. Uh, I've been able to translate visions into realities and I think that's the greatest gift that God has given me to give to others. Um, with our work in, in Micronesia and the schools and colleges that we started there, uh, with our workshop for senior adult people, things that we've done together that have been enabled and enabled the lives of others, I think is the greatest joy and satisfaction that I've had in life. Can you, can you give me a, an example of that work? Because providing opportunities for others mm -hmm. is a great life lesson. So can you just take a moment and tell me, give me an example of those. One example, I think, is that we were given a gift of a factory okay. because it had a house attached to it thinking that we were living in a parsonage, and so the benefactor who gave us that um, thought we would be benefited by having a house of our own. And instead of that, we surveyed the community that we lived in and found that outside of the Sun Belt, the greatest gift that we could offer would be to reestablish re that factory that was attached to the house, or the house to the factory, would be to redesign that and retool that for a community of workers who were laid off from factories in the, Fle the Fleetwood and Kutztown area who um, only had social security and were looking for a place for fellowship as well as adding additional money to their pocket in order to do things that they couldn't do ordinarily. That started in 1980-81. It's still working, mm. still going strong. Uh, the people there are employed. We do outsourcing. For example, we're doing work for polymer candies at this point, packaging. And they're earning over a minimum wage, and they have fellowship with each other every day, five days a week. So that's taking 
perhaps a, a gift that had been given to us with a vision that had developed through a study and a plan of operation that has put that into work and that now is 35 years old. The same thing happened in the mission field. We were given land and I was doing lecturing for our United Church of Christ World Board. And after doing that for 10 years, I thought, we can't continue doing a dog and pony show, you know, in one area and another. And we've had this inherited land that we have, 143 acres, beginning at the Pacific Ocean and going up an old extinct volcano in the jungle. Why can't we put something on the ground for young people? So we have now over 100 students, including 83 in addition, who are preschoolers. Um, who are working and studying together and are now uh, uh, in the midst of vocational work and high school work and preschool and also affiliated with colleges and universities throughout the Pacific area. That's a gift that has been turned around as a gift to others and a gift of love that we've all been involved in. Mm. And that's an example of vision with planning and uh, execution. And, and putting it into practice. It into practice. That's yeah. wonderful. So Paul, what does love mean to you? Love means action. Uh, it is the greatest gift that we're given in life. And how we put it to use can be very philosophical, it can be very theological, but it's very, very practical to life itself. I think lo love is the essence of life. And that comes through relationships that we have. A marriage that has been just blessed for 57 years, children that have been offspring, grandchildren, and, and now uh, I must admit another thing that most people don't realize is that for the last 13 years I've been helping to raise grand dogs. Oh. I walk them every day <laughs> while see. the children and the families are in school. So for 13 years retirement has gone to a relationship with the dog. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Paul, how would you like to be remembered? Uh, just as a, an, an average person who feels that, that life has been so wonderful, so blessed, and it all comes through love and relationships. Amazing. Amazing. Mr. Paul Hetrick, thank you so much for being part of this project. It's been a privilege. And thank honor. you.